the autumn weather is really quite beautiful today. It is a little bit cloudy, but it's overall pretty crisp. You didn't ask for a weather forecast, but there we go. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is a what I eat in a day, Copenhagen edition. I'm in Copenhagen today to give a lecture and uh, I had to eat all my meals out. So I thought what better occasion than to sort of bring you guys with me, talk a little bit about food joy, give you some recommendations. But before we do any of that, we just need to catch a train, go to the city center. I already have something that I want to do for breakfast. I think I was successful in finding a pretty calm spot. Let's see what happens. Anyway, I went by Lenbeagel, which is like countryside bakery. I don't know if I need to translate these things. Anyway, they specialize in vegan and gluten-free pastries and different kinds of baked goods. They have a lot of Danish classics that are vegan, which is amazing because some of these things I haven't had in years. And I got three things and I thought, let's do a little like fun taste test. It's not gonna be a very nutrition focused breakfast, but then we'll redeem ourselves at lunch, I think. Anyway, um, I forgot my small uh, tote bags. So we do have paper bags, but I digress and look at this. Okay, so, so, I always go to Cuff when I'm looking for breakfast in Copenhagen. They are all plant-based and amazing cakes, pastries, breakfast, basically every time I'm here. So I thought today, let's mix it up, let's do something different. Okay, first thing is this. This is a Danish classic. It's directly translated, it's a cinnamon snail. It resembles closely a cinnamon bun, cinnamon, whatever, but the pastry dough is flaky. Anyway. And it's been years since I've gone into a bakery and had one of these. Okay. Mm. Processing. Loving. It's very common for Danes to pick these up during the weekend and have them with their breakfast. I forgot about the taste test thing. I just completely submerged myself in this. And I'm gonna get really greasy fingers. I think I'm gonna save some of these and then I can snack on them during the day. I've always loved cinnamon in pastries and the Danish cinnamon snail is always a 10 out of 10. I really love these. I love them especially when they're hot, warm, and this is cold, but it's still really good. Let's continue. I have another Danish classic, but I think I want to do a little pit stop before we get to that. Um, and it's their croissant. I just, it's something that you really can't get that many places when you're plant-based. So whenever I see it, I go straight for it. I love the croissant at uh, Cuff. They have an amazing one. I uh, see what it is. I remember vaguely that I've had this before and the flavor is really good, but it's not that fluffy. I think you can also tell. The flavor is really nice, but it's not the best plant-based croissant that I've had. I've only had three different kinds, but I digress. No, four, okay, doesn't matter. I would have preferred it fluffier. So if we need to be a little bit harsh, I think 3.5, four. Um, I have another cake. This is not breakfast. This is just dessert. But the thing is with the Danes, like a lot of these things we do eat for breakfast. And this is the next one. It does not look very nice on screen. Of course it does. This is Bonsvia, which is a spongy vanilla cake. It's a yeast based dough. And then it has this brown sugar caramelization on top and it is divine this is very wet though like very wet like it's usually like a dry spongy cake and then you have um this creaminess on top i remember i made this once but overall not hating it um my fingers are absolutely gross so gross just like pathetically trying to wipe them off I also ate some of the paper, cool. So in an hour and a half, I have a lecture that I'll be giving. I have all my stuff with me. It's the trash workout, sort of an interactive workshop where we go over the overview 
sort of how to start living sustainably and what kind of sectors or areas are the most important to look at sort of like a very good beginner's guide that's what we're doing today i am so full i can't even think because this breakfast i'm gonna i'm gonna say breakfast and be generous with it because it was so <laughs> so heavy so greasy um i think i'll need to find like an acidic juice or just something so hang on for a second but it was worth it it was really good it was amazing i don't think i got to raid the bone sphere and i'll say like probably a five i'm being stingy with my ratings but it's simply because it was very wet i think i'll need to go home and make that again so i can have it like the way i want it i don't know anyway continuing with the day so i found a juice at a local coffee shop and that was just what i needed i don't necessarily like my juice with ice cubes but that's what i got and it's okay it's fine it was a juice I found the venue for the lecture and now I just have to sit and prepare a little bit. Stay tuned. I made the trash workout sort of a exercise workout where we divide sustainable action into four week programs and we're gonna go through them and make everything super easily accessible instead of this sort of uncomprehensive big task that we have to achieve. It's gonna be like a fun game instead. At least that's the hope. And I've given this lecture to such a wide, large demographic from very young people like it is today, around 18 to 25 today. I've also done it with bigger corporations and companies who assume I... hire me. I don't know why I'm whispering, there are literally no one here. So we're going to Bistro Verde now. It's actually where I had my book launch and I love their small plates, small things. I'm kind of craving a vegetable right now. Anyway, the lecture went amazingly. It's about a hundred people and they were really nice and attentive and responsive, which is the best thing because I like to do jokes and I hate when the jokes are just not landing. Tumbleweed, my favorite part of this job, by the way. It's the actually communicating and connecting with people. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. So I need a glass of water, but I think I will also get a little glass of wine to celebrate. At Bistro Verde, I had a plant-based Caesar salad. I rarely order salads at restaurants, to be honest, because I always want to try stuff that I cannot make at home, you know what I mean? Maybe it means that I'm missing out on some amazing flavor combinations in salads, though. Let me hear from the salad ordering people here if I'm missing out. But after the breakfast, quote unquote, I had today, there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted something fresh and green, and this hit just the spot. Bistro Verde has such a great atmosphere too, so I sat there for a while working, taking notes, organizing my work, and just relaxed. It was really great to just sit there for a while. I used to be very anxious about sitting alone, not just at restaurants, but anywhere really. But I have found such calm in it now. Perhaps eating out alone feels intimidating, but it's really worth practicing, I promise. Feeling okay eating alone has given me so much freedom. Freedom from my food insecurities and insecurities about myself as well. I really recommend working on feeling good in situations like this because it opens up so much mental space. No matter who you are, sometimes you're going to be alone and by yourself. And it is so much easier to see the value in spending time with yourself. And the staff here is so friendly. They brought over a cup of tea for me and I rarely drink tea, but this was really nice. <laughs> finished my work day basically at Bistro Verde I had a little Caesar salad which was perfect because I was still honestly not very hungry from breakfast we're still going with breakfast anyway I have worked up an appetite now and I'm happy that I have because I am moving on to Vitalia which is a new restaurant oh, it's not new anymore I haven't gone there before so I'm pretty excited about that So this first class idiot went in for a plate of pasta and ended up having their four course tasting menu with a wine pairing. I know. I started up with a glass of Cremant and their bread and this bread 
Jesus Christ, this stuff was good. It was baked to perfection, and with the tasting menu, you can get as much as you want. The waiter did warn me, however, about filling up on bread, and I easily would have if he hadn't warned me. It was just so perfect. I had some olive oil to dip it in, which was great, although I do prefer a salty plant-based butter. The first dish was a fresh and crispy starter with apple and fennel. It came with a herby emulsion and something pickled, really fresh and delicate, and of course, I cleared the whole plate. The wines are all carefully selected and came from sustainable vineyards. I really like when you can feel like the beverages are not just afterthoughts, but they also represent the values of the restaurants. These pairings were so nice and just fit so well with the food and were also amazing on their own. The second dish was a parmesan with Brussels sprouts and pickled mustard seeds. Loved it. I have a recipe for parmesan in my cookbook as well. It's a crispy potato dish consisting of many thin slices of potato stacked on top of each other and then cooked and fried. And the only note I have here is that the outer layers were perfectly seasoned. The middle layers lacked salt, which was too bad because the dish was overall really well balanced and the potato slices were impressively thin. The main dish was a mushroom risotto, and listen, I always, as in always, choose pasta over risotto. But the menu is set by the chef when you order the tasting menu. And they came out and said that I would be having a risotto and not a pasta, and I was initially very disappointed. However, I am so happy that I got to try this, and I would recommend it to everyone who would listen. This was divine perfectly balanced, seasoned, and the mushrooms on top were incredible. For dessert, I had the biggest glass of their homemade limoncello, which actually got me a little bit drunk. Yes, that and only that glass managed to do that. And I got a panna cotta. The panna cotta had a strawberry coulis and a rosemary balsamic vinegar, which was a genius pairing for this otherwise very heavy dessert. It felt so light and the flavors just matched really well together. This plate, as all the ones before it, was of course completely cleared, and at this point I was full and also a tad tipsy. Shout out to making your outro literally weeks after you filmed the rest of it. Anyway, I got a little bit drunk, not gonna lie. I took the train back home and went instantly to bed. And the next day I woke up and I thought it was a hangover, but I had caught a flu or just some fluke, something like that. I was so ill, so I couldn't film the outro there. And then I have been working, going back and forth to Copenhagen and to Oslo. And overall, she was a busy girl. Okay, I really wanted to do a what I eat in a day while I was on the go like this because that has been my life for the past weeks and it will continue to be my life for the foreseeable future as well. When you're working outside your home and when you're going out like that, sometimes I feel lonely or I feel like I'm too much by myself. It really helps to vlog it. Also, then you start looking at experiences in a different way. So it's a nice thing for me. I really love doing it, I really enjoy it. I hope that you enjoyed watching it as well. And I would really just like to underline as well here that working on being by yourself and appreciating and valuing the time that you have with yourself is so incredibly freeing. It's something that we're not necessarily always taught and it's something we can forget to practice. And I have been so bad at it in the past. I have been literally the worst at it. I remember a time where I wouldn't go anywhere unless I had someone to go with me, which meant that I missed out on a lot of things that I initially could have just done by myself, but I felt too insecure about it. It really pays off to work on that and to practice being by yourself and enjoying these things. You can go to a favorite restaurant by yourself and enjoy a nice meal. You don't need anyone to take you there, to bring you there, or to be with you. It's okay. And it's given me so much freedom, especially in terms of food and food insecurities, feeling okay sitting and eating by myself is something I never thought I would be able to do and it's some of the most valuable time that I spend with myself now. So anyway, that was it for this video. I hope that you liked it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you would order a salad in a restaurant or if you always go for something else as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourself. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!